All right, what's going on guys and welcome to another full detailing series on the channel. Of course, this is the start to the full detailing series of my Gen 1 Raptor. Couldn't take it any longer. I wanted to wait to do a full detail on this thing just because it's so big and I just did a full detail on the E46, but I couldn't take it any longer. So today is commencing the first video in that series. So as usual, one of the first steps here is doing a full wash. I like to use the Obsessed Garage Decontamination Soap. It's a little more aggressive than like the normal Adams soap, so you don't want it to really like sit in the sun, I would assume, because I don't think it's like pH balanced like the Adams stuff is. Um, so it's a little more aggressive, and it's meant to sort of lift um, maybe any protection or anything that's sort of just kind of lurking on the surface still. Hopefully it will get that. If not, not a huge deal, but it's worth uh, just switching out the soaps using something a little more aggressive. The next thing, as of course you guys know, is the iron out or iron remover. Um, a vehicle that especially is outside uh, is exposed to iron particles that are in the air or maybe near like rail cars and stuff like that. Like it's just sort of a, an outside environmental thing. Um, this truck is six years old, so I just used an application of iron out even just near the wheels and stuff uh, definitely needed it although on a red vehicle it's extremely hard to tell how well the iron remover is working you sort of have to look at the ground or look on like other surfaces of it just to see if you can you know see any little streaks that are uh, you know iron particles that are breaking down so uh, regardless I just spray it on let it sit for five minutes and then rinse it off really really thoroughly just make sure you rinse it off in its entirety and uh, I try to be careful about the plastics I don't want to spray it directly on the plastics if I can help it but I haven't really had any big issues with that so the next step is a clay bar I like to use an old-school clay bar as I mentioned in my other video series uh, when I'm doing a car it just feels like I can control it a little bit better and I have a kind of a sense of like how well it's working. I'm being a hypocrite this time around because this is like a monster truck and I don't want to spend three hours claying it. I'm just taking the easy way out. I actually tried out a clay mitt, which I think is from Adams. I haven't used one before. Um, and it actually worked really well. I was able to kind of hear the surface, um, like if I was uh, working the surface properly and then I could go down to the areas that I haven't gotten yet and it was a little louder. So it definitely needed to be clayed. Um, the only thing I would say about a mitt is you have to be very aware of your pressure. So if this is, if this is the paint here and you have your hand kind of like this, you're not claying at this part. You know, obviously I'm kind of being dramatic here, but this is the only part that's gonna be claying if you have this against the paint. So you have to be very careful. You have a bigger plane, you know, your hand instead of like a little piece of clay or like the uh, little nano skin pad or whatever. It has different pressure points. So with the bigger thing, I found that 
you have to really make sure you're pressing your full hand against the paint to make sure you're actually being efficient in that entire area. That's my really my only um, sort of feedback on that. I actually thought it was a little nicer than I thought it would be and it helped me get this thing done in probably half the amount of time. Of course, as I mentioned in my other video, I like to use Adam's soap as my lubricant. Easy to work with, doesn't leave anything behind, it's cheap, and you probably already have it in the garage. So that's my go-to, put some soap, put some water, and then go right ahead, and that's your lubricant. Of course, we're gonna rinse off the truck after we're done, and uh, ideally we have lifted pretty much all of the contaminants from the vehicle, and then uh, we will dry. So I like to blow off the truck with my blower, and then um, I just use a regular towel, don't use a drying aid or anything like that. Uh, you don't wanna put any gloss or any sort of protection on the vehicle when you're about to be polishing. So that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Uh, full decontamination, it definitely needed both steps. It definitely needed clay, because I could hear it. I don't know if you could hear it in the video. Uh, but stay tuned for the next video, which will be the taping series. So I don't know if you can tell, but I've actually already brought the truck inside. I've got my tape ready to go. And uh, that's gonna be the next video. I'm not going to focus on the products quite as much. Um, so thankfully for you, you probably don't have a few extra videos to watch. It'll be a little more hands-on for the truck detail this time around. So guys, stay tuned. Links in the description. Click those links, get some stuff, and comment below if I forgot anything. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.